Amen. He's blessed us. Amen. We, we know God is going to do something here tonight. God's not done. Amen. I, I feel like God's He come to do something wonderful. Amen. A miracle tonight for somebody. Amen. You may feel like you're in a place where you don't know where you're going, where you're going to turn to. Amen. You may say, well, a lot of us have already prayed, but that you don't know where everybody's at in their mind and in their heart. Amen. I believe this word is from the Lord. Amen. I pray and I've had this word in my spirit for, I know, probably a month now. And I really feel like this is what God wants to tell the church. Amen. You can take it or you can leave it. Amen. But this is what God told me to tell you. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Amen. I, I want to read a scripture to you. But I want to do something different that I, I don't know that I've ever preached like this, but this is how I feel led to do it tonight. I mean, this is how I feel like the Lord is leading me. I heard another man preach this message before. And you can say I copied him, you can say what you want. And but this is what God laid in my heart. And you can have it or you can leave it. Amen. Hebrews 9. In verse 27. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Hebrews 9 and 27 reads like this. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. And it is once appointed unto men to die, amen. but after this, the judgment. Amen. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. To be judged to the deeds according that we've done in our body, whether they've been good or whether they've been bad. So we all are going to appear before Him. Amen. Amen. One day, whether you've done good, whether you've done bad. Amen. We There's one thing for sure. We're going to stand before Him. Amen. And I truly believe that Amen. That everybody needs to know in their heart and in their mind whether they're right with God, Brother Jerry, whether they're not right with God. And we know in our hearts and our minds where we stand with God tonight. Now, I don't know about you. You know if you've been serious with God or whether you've been playing on God. We know whether we've done the things that we should have done or whether we're backslid or whether we're a sinner, whether we're at in our walk with God. Amen. We know where we're at. Amen. The Bible tells us, amen, that the time has come. Amen. The judgment must begin at the house of God. It is first begin at us. I can already feel the Holy Ghost. It is first begin at us. Where, amen, is what's going to be the end of those that obey not the gospel of God. And then he also went on to say if the righteous scarcely be saved. Amen. If I'm scarcely going to be saved. If we're just scarcely going to be saved. Where is the ungodly and the sinner going to appear? What's going to be the end of those that obey not the gospel of God? What's going to be the end of the ones? Amen. That won't take heed to what God said. Amen. When God sends a word, God means business. Amen. Amen. this scripture I, I just feel like this is where God's taking me. Amen. Luke chapter 16. Amen. You don't have to read to go to it if you don't want to, but this is what God has laid on my heart. Amen. I've had this on my mind so much. Brother J. Orr and I, I've cried and wept many tears for lost people. I invited a lot of lost to this service. Now, I know a lot of them showed up, but it's all right, Brother J. Orr, because I know this is still what God wants. Amen. Because I know there's still somebody in here that needs to hear this. Amen. This is the word for the hour. This is the time that we're living in. Amen. This is the time that we're living in. People don't hear where they're going to go anymore if they don't make a decision. I'm not just talking to sinners. I'm talking to church folk. They don't hear it enough that if they don't do right, they're going to go to hell. And they don't hear it enough that they're doing in their sins. He said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we have to be in this right here knowing. We know where we're at. We're in this time. Amen. Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid in his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. 
and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and saith Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Hearing about a rich man, Brother Jehor, had everything that he ever wanted in life. Amen. There was a beggar, amen, that laid in his gates full of sores, just desiring the crumbs that fell from his table. Amen. But the rich man had no sympathy, had no mercy, had no compassion upon one like him. But we're living in a time that is just like that. Didn't care about the things of God, didn't care about what God thought about it. Amen. That's where we're living at today. Amen. But there was a time when they both met life's destiny, Brother J.R. They met where they was going to go. He said they both died. They both died. But it said that Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Amen. And the rich man, he was buried, but then he lifted up his eyes in hell. In a place of torment. Of torment. Come on. Lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Now, I know a lot of preachers will talk about just the flames of hell, but it's not just about how hot it is there and how bad that the heat is there, but it, there's other things in hell that makes it bad. But I tell you what, I've heard read throughout the scriptures that that place is going to be a dark place. I know some people are scared of the dark, but they're saying, but this is a place that is so dark, amen, that you can't even see your hand in front of you. It's so dark. Because I didn't copy him. But J.Y. I laid, 
I was sitting there praying one day, and God bid me to get his CD out and listen to that. And I listened to it, and I listened to it, and I listened to it. And, I, and the more I listened to it, the more it got in my spirit. And one day I was out mowing, and I didn't think nothing of it. This has been three, probably two or three weeks ago, I'd say. And God, God stopped me right in the middle of weeding and said, Get your phone out and begin to write. I mean, I began to write letters, Brother Bo, every other day. I just start writing them day after day. I'd write these letters. They come to my heart. And something would speak to me and say, write. Write, Brother J.R. I could feel it. But if I could just have your imagination. We all know there ain't no post office in hell. You can't send letters from hell. It's a place you'll never get out of. But if I could have your mind, if somebody could write a letter from hell. If somebody could send forth a letter from hell and it could reach your door today. I mean, it could reach your heart today. What would it say? I mean, God laid on my heart and I began to write one day. I mean, if Judas could write a letter. I mean, from hell. I began to think about Judas. And, I mean, we all know the story of Judas. I mean, Satan filled his heart. Brother Paul, I mean, he betrayed Jesus. I mean, he was in the garden and took the priest in there and led away the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I mean, for just 30 pieces of silver. I mean, somebody that could have been his best friend, somebody that could have been, I mean, the best thing that ever happened to him, but he allowed something, I mean, to entice him and draw him away from God. Yeah. He allowed something to take him from God. Yes. I mean, if, if, if Judas could write a letter to the church, this is what he would write to us. Dear Jesus, or if he could write one to Jesus, I mean, this is what he would write back to Jesus. After all that happened, he went out and hung himself on a tree. And then he thought he had no hope for the job. He, this is what he would say. Dear Jesus, it's been so long since I felt your love and compassion. I can't believe I traded all your love and joy and mercy for just a few pieces of silver. I know it really don't matter much now, but I'm sorry, Jesus. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. I saw you do the miracles you've done. Seen you feed the multitude. Seen you raise the dead, heal the sick. But still, I traded all that for having this place of torment. There's no water here, Jesus. If you could just give me a drink like you did that woman at the well. Maybe just one more time. I plead and I beg for mercy, but I can't find any. There's nothing but pain and sorrow here. I remember the night. I mean that I betrayed you. There you were in the garden praying and weeping for us. And I gave you away. I traded you for silver. The silver really wasn't worth it now that I'm in this place of torment. I threw it down at the priest's feet. And I remember so plainly me wishing there was a way out. I was so confused and didn't know where to go. Didn't know what to do. Something was telling me it would be better if I just killed myself. Something was telling me maybe you should just die because you traded the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus don't want you anymore. I really wish I would have never sold you, Jesus. You could have been my friend, could have been my best friend, Jesus. Could have been my Lord and could have been my God. But now I'm stuck in this awful place forever. I guess I'm writing this because I wanted to say that I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus, that I traded you away. Lord God, have we ever been in a situation where we betrayed Jesus? I began to write, this is the very, this one was the very first one, the one I'm fixing to read was the very first one I wrote. And I can remember writing it, thinking how strong and how powerful, because I know some sickness has been here. But this is what God wrote to me in my heart. And I began to write, amen, maybe if somebody, amen, a lost soul, Brother J.R., that was taught by their parents, but chose dope over hope. I mean, this is what he spoke to my heart. He said, this is them writing it back to their parents. Dear mom and dad, I know it's not your fault that I'm in this place that I'm in. I know I chose the wrong road whenever I became of age. But I really wish I would have only listened to what y'all 
were trying to instill in me. You began to get harder on us. And I didn't want to live that kind of life. I seen all my friends making fun of the way we lived. And I just didn't want a part of that. But now I wish anything I can live that way one more time. Whenever I left home, I got my first job and started making money and brought, bought my own home and thought I was doing everything right. But then I started experiencing things and trying things. Then before I knew it, I lost my job, lost my family, lost all my friends, lost all hope, lost all belief, lost all faith in myself. I gave my whole life to pills and drugs, gave it to meth and cocaine, started, and I started staying around the wrong crowd. I was involved in things that took control of my life. It was killing me slowly, but I was so foolish and couldn't realize it. If I could just go back, I'd find that old altar just one more time. Somebody needs to find an altar one more time before it's too late. Amen. If I could just find that altar one more time, but now I find myself in these flames and in this darkness. There is no light and it feels so hopeless. I know now that y'all were just trying to warn me. A few weeks before I came into this awful place, I was in the house of God for an Easter service. The preacher preached his heart out. He told me there was a way of escape. But I left that day with a regret in my heart knowing that I should have came to that altar. I walked out. But a few weeks went by later and I finally met life's destiny and ended up in this place forever. But now I have no hope. There's no love here. I've cried and I've begged for just one more gospel song. Just one more altar call and just one more service. But I'm doomed for eternity. I'll never get out. It'll never change. I know you tried to warn me, but I'm forever lost. I guess you could say I chose dope over hope. Maybe Ananias and Sapphire would like to write a letter to the church. I mean, they felt themselves as all the apostles, everybody, the whole church was selling their lands and their possessions. Amen. They all was sitting on it, laying it down at the apostles' feet. We know the story, what happened for the JR. Amen. They, they thought probably to keep back part of the price. Amen. And hid it from the apostles. Amen. But they come in one day and laid it down. But Peter recognized that they had lied to the Holy Ghost. Amen. He, Ananias fell dead a few hours later. Sapphire comes in. She lies to the Holy Ghost and she falls dead. We know the story. But if they could write a letter to the church, perhaps it may say something like this. Dear church, I felt like writing and telling you about the place we've been in for so long. Listen, listen to this. This is where we're at today. This is where we're at today. When me and my husband entered into this place, I didn't know what to expect right off. But he began to bite me and began to spit on me. I thought, not my Ananias. He would never do this. I feel the Holy Ghost. He would never do this to me. He cussed me and he smacked me. This place is nothing but screams and weeping. All you hear is begging and pleading for mercy, but you can't find any. We were so happy and so peaceful before we came here. Now we're in misery and we hate each other. Can't stand to be around each other. I remember the apostles and the church began to sell their lands and possessions. Me and Ananias began to plot and fight against it. We had planned to hold back part of our possessions. We didn't want to give up everything. We worked too hard for it. Made too much money. We could not give up what we had. But none of it really matters now that we're here. We're in this flame, we're in the flames forever because we allowed our hearts to become hard. We knew God loved a cheerful giver, but we were too proud. But now we're stranded in this obscure darkness forever. I guess what I'm trying to say is I wish we would have never held back our part. 
It kind of reminds me of the church today. Always holding back on God and keeping their part back from Him. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, please pray while you have a chance. Please give your all to Jesus. We didn't, but you still have time. But you still have time. Don't miss church. Make sure to pray with others while they're down. Life is so short, but eternity is such a long time. Be kind to one another. Show affection to one another because there is not there. Love one another. Pray with one another because you can't play with them there. They'll hate you over there. They'll spit upon you over there. Oh, you think they talk about you now? Wait till you get over there. Honey, they'll be biting upon you. The very ones that you don't want to. The very ones that you thought was against you for you are going to be against you. The very ones that you don't care Please love God with everything you have. I wish a million times men and eyes would have sold that port. And if I only had one more chance, I'd lay everything I had at the feet of the apostles. What I'm trying to say, church, is please give Jesus your whole heart. Please give Jesus your whole heart. Amen. We're living in a time they don't love God. The Bible tells us in the book of Timothy that they were lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. But he told us to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. But somehow the church has failed from that. We don't love God no more. We come to church because we have to come to church. Amen. We, we, we treat our jobs so good. We, but Jeff, we go to church. We go to our jobs every day. We don't want to miss our payday. We don't want to miss our paycheck. We'll come in. Uh, we'll leave the house extra early to make sure we get there. Amen. And some of us treat God. Can't even come to church because we, we think it, we're not obligated to come. Amen. We're not obligated, but we'll get up every morning. We'll leave extra early for our jobs, but we can't leave extra early for all this come up, that come up. But where is our hearts at? Do we realize? Oh, do we realize what we're doing? You're not just costing yourself, but you're costing others. Yeah. You're costing your babies. You're costing your family when you decide not to come. Yeah. Hey, you're costing your husband. Hey, you're costing your wife when you say, I ain't coming tonight. I think I'll miss. I think I'll stay yeah. home. But honey, let me tell you, yeah. you're going to end up in hell. You're going to lift up your eyes yeah. in hell. Yeah. Come on, Just what begins at the house of God. It's yeah. yeah. the Judgment begins at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what's going to be the end of those that don't obey the gospel? It's going to be a sad time. We think we're okay. We think we're doing good. Maybe a lame member would like to write a letter to some friends that they sit on the pew next to. Amen. Maybe if they could write one, they might write something like this. Dear friends, it's been so long since I've seen you, but I wanted to stop and tell you that the preacher was right. The pastor was right. There was more to serving God than just sitting on a pew. He told us about hell and told us where we would end up at, but we turned them away. We're living in that time right now. Amen. There's some sitting on a pew right now, Bojo, and that's exactly what's going on. They turn the preacher off. They turn the pastor down. They say he preaches too hard. Hey, honey, he don't use, I mean, he don't use the word of God right. They tell us that the preachers are preaching too hard. But, honey, are we living in that time where a preacher can ever preach too hard to us to keep us out of hell? I'm just being real with you. Not you want real, I'm going to give you real. Have there ever been a preacher preach too hard? Honey, but we are going to keep us out of the fire. I don't 
my flesh keeping me out of heaven just to turn and go to hell save him from he said compassion making a difference but compassion sometimes don't work on some he said in others saving them by pulling them out of the fire some brother J.R. some of the lost sheep were just going to go on in the way so you got to go out and pull them out of the fire come on come on feel the Holy Ghost some of them ain't going to listen some of them ain't going to take heed that's why instead of showing them what you're going to be alright you'll be okay you'll be alright it's alright if you miss your passion sometimes won't do the difference but honey some you're going to pull out of the fire Has the church forgot about the lost? He said that when a soul is lost, I wonder how many people that's got wisdom is in the church. I've been thinking an awful lot about Brother Dennis. I know some you say this, say that. But I've tried witnessing myself, Sister Dory. That's something hard to do to people in this time. Yes, sir. It's to talk to them about God. Yes. God stirred my heart in lost people and praying for them and trying to witness and talk to them and get them to come to church. Because if I don't get them here, I may never win them. I need them to get in the presence of the Lord. I know they can get saved out there, but most of us got saved in a church. But it was somebody making a difference. I began to think about it, how hard witnessing is. I prayed, Brother J.R. The other day, I said, Lord, I'd like to have an opportunity to witness to somebody. I left that evening, I was out and about, ran into somebody, and I finally got a door open that I could witness to somebody. And then I witnessed to them. They told me they was going to come to church tonight. They didn't, but it's all right. I told them I showed them the love of God, and I told them that Jesus loved them, and they couldn't make it there, so they couldn't make a change, Sister Donna. They said, I just don't know. I drink. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I said, you can make a difference. God does make a difference. He took me just as I was, but jail I lost. But where is the church's mind? They forgot about lost people. We're so sanctified and so holy here that we forget about people that are lost. It was in the same condition that we were one day. We get so holy and so mighty, we forget that one day we was messed up in the head. We forget sometimes we were down so low that we couldn't help ourselves. And we needed somebody to give us a little pull. Somebody to reach us a helping hand. Did we forget? But they told us that, it was, that we would go to hell. We turned them away. I spent years sitting on that seat thinking I was okay. But after coming into this place of darkness, everything's not okay. It's sort of like what Luke wrote, but about a thousand times worse. It's so dry here. I feel dehydrated constantly and the heat is so very hot. But that's not the worst part. The dryness ain't the worst part. It's that I'll never feel the presence of the Lord again. I'll never hear another altar call given and I'll never get another hug from a family member. There's no love here. I can't find no joy. Not even peace of mind. I know that I'll never get out and that I'm going to die over and over again. The preacher used to tell us that Paul died daily. Now I die every day too. Wake up and pray while you got a chance. You won't get no second chance in hell. No chances, no second chances in hell. I failed. I missed God. But you still got a chance and still have an opportunity to heed to the call. Friends, please don't come to this awful place. Just be willing and obedient. I wish I was still sitting next to you every service and still your friend. I hope you will only listen. We're living in that time right there. But I truly believe if somebody had sat on a pew would write a letter, that's what they tell us. There's more to serving God than where we're at. Amen. 
worried about this thing. How long has it been since we read somebody that was lost? How long has it been since we really prayed for somebody that hadn't been to church in a while? I mean, I got real serious down to this thing. I began to think about we get our minds so worried about ourselves and forgot about people that's dying and going to hell. We got enough in our church that we should be, we should stay busy praying for our church, Brother J. Orr. But not to mention all the loss that's in our families and friends that we know and people that we know. We know enough people in this time, Brother Sam, that we should stay busy praying. We should never get down and say, I don't know what to pray about. We got so much to pray about the church lays back like there's nothing they can do. But the Bible tells us that men are always to pray and not faint. We, that's why he told us to pray always with all prayer and supplication because it's a time where you're going to beg and you're going to plead and you're going to cry under the Lord because there's so many lost and dying and there's such a hold on it's going to take the anointing to destroy the yokes off of the people and we're living in a time but I, I just want you to know that your love does make a difference your kindness does make a difference in lost people's soul we do make a difference. But we've got to be making a difference. How many times are we passing by, Brother J.R.? How many times, Brother Bo, do we just walk right past and don't say nothing to them? Well, they didn't say nothing to me. Honey, they don't want to talk to you if you're going to act like that. Amen. The first thing that crosses their mind is look at that hole in this man. So angry and puffed up. They got no joy about them. That's the first thing they want to say to people like us because we don't show our love towards them. Can't tell them about Jesus and what he done for them. They turn you away, that's one thing. But if you don't try, that's another. I'm guilty. The same as you are. That's why this word pricked my heart. Because I'm guilty. Because it hurt my feelings when God told me we ain't done enough for the lost. We don't reach enough for the lost. We let them pass on by like they're just floating in the wind. Like for nothing. But somebody was praying for me. Brother Gerald, somebody cared about me. I ain't always been this way. I try to remember I ain't always been this way. Somebody cried for me. Somebody prayed for me. But just somebody was fasting. Somebody was weeping for me. Somebody wanted to see me do good, Brother Gerald. Somebody wanted to see the blood applied to my life. If I'd only accepted, they was praying and crying for me. And if we don't pray and cry for them, they're going to die and go to hell. And we're going to be the reason they did. and begin to ask you why you didn't say anything to them when you see them in the store. I know it's not popular. I know that y'all ain't jumping up and down, shouting all over the place because I didn't bring you an encouraging word, but this is what God gave me. And if this don't uplift the church and edify the church, you just need to go home and think about it. Amen. I wrote this one today. I was sitting there with a JR. And I believe this one might be the best yet. Because we're living in a time where young people are so, well, their minds are so far from God. Because the world has so much to offer us. People have so much to offer us. Life has so much to offer us. We're still young. We're thinking about life and what we're going to do with it. And they want to see this and want to do that. Want to try this, want to try that. Daddy tried it. Daddy done it. I want a taste of it. I want to try it. And we're living in a time where even the adults have forgot about their children. And forgot what happens behind closed doors. And why we're in the positions that some of the young people is. Amen. But maybe if a young girl would write a letter, she might say something like this. I always liked... I was always liked in school. I always had friends. I was always talked well of. But then I got to high school. I began to see this boy. And as soon as my parents met him, they said he was nothing but trouble. Oh, we're living in that time. Brother Jeff, I've been there. My parents always took me to church while I was growing up. They took me to Sunday school and revivals. They always had me in church. I was there. 
But Joe, I was there. Kept me in church. I was always at church. Felt like I was always going. I didn't understand why mommy and daddy made me go so much. Why we got to go to church so much? Nobody else goes. Nobody else cares. I love to sing in church. But my boyfriend didn't like me to sing. He said it caused other guys to look at me. Throughout school, I always made pretty good grades, but after me and him got together, everything went downhill. I started skipping class, missing work. Before I knew it, my grades were horrible. I had no friends, no family, nobody long, nobody else wanted to be around me no more because of the way I acted, because he was there. I barely graduated, and as soon as I did, the things began to get worse. He began drinking here and there and started being abusive with me. I never, I never thought I'd allow somebody to control my life like that. I never went back to church after that. He wouldn't let me. Yeah, I thought about it. I even tried a few times, but I knew he wouldn't let me. I knew he just beat me even more. I allowed him to pull me away from Jesus. I allowed him to pull me away from Jesus. I allowed him to pull me away from singing and pull me away from being in church with my parents. I allowed him to pull me away from what I had been taught. I always felt the love of God in my heart and I always knew that God had plans for me. But he took control of me. I remember the night I was killed. We had gotten in an argument over finances and I tried to leave. He beat me until there was no life in me. As I took my final breath, all I could think about was how much I'd let Jesus down. Just could think about all that I'd done throughout my life and left Jesus out of it. Forgot about Jesus. I let Jesus down. Then as I entered into my eternal home, I could hear the screams and the cries of lost sinners. I'd been cheated. I've been deceived. I knew better than this, but now there's no way out. There's nothing I can do. I cried and I begged for mercy, but mercy never came. The flames were so hot that I could see my skin melting and running down my arms. But that's not the worst part. The worst thing is that I burn, I burn, but I never die. I'm never consumed, but I burn and I burn. But I never die. It's so dark here, there's no light at all. I let something control me and take me away from Jesus. I could have had a new body. I could have had a new life. Kind of like the one they used to sing at in Sunday school. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord. I'll have a new life. Could have sat by the river of life. Could have sat with Jesus in his throne. Could have been beside the one that died for me. What I would trade to listen to my parents. But I chose the dry parts and places of hell. Please, friend, don't let anything take you from Jesus. Don't let anything take you from Jesus. Kids, listen. Eternity's a long time. I feel God saying, don't listen. And I, I listen. Eternity is a very long time, Brother Sam. I'm speaking to myself when I preach. I preach this whole night thinking about my own soul. Can't even think about nobody else because I'm thinking about myself. I don't want to go to that awful place. A place that I'll never get out of. It'll be forever. Brother Sam, if I, we always talk about what it'll be like to get to heaven. How people want to walk on the street of gold, go through the pearly gates, go by the river, do all that they want to do, but they never hear what will happen if they end up in hell. Come on. They want to talk about seeing mommy in heaven and seeing grandpa, but they don't want to talk about reality. That they could end up in hell. But the reality is that probably over 50% of us in here won't make heaven our home. I know that sounds sad, I know it sounds harsh, but most of us, Brother Josh, will end up in hell because we choose. We're living in a time it's not like it used to be. 
It's really not. We got so much to pull us away from God and so much to take us away from Him that it's so easy to get distracted in this time. It's so easy to sit on a few service after service and hear the preached word of God and not do anything about it. It's so easy. It's so easy to end up in hell. I just told you a little bit about what God gave me on it. That if somebody would write, have you done your best for Jesus? Have you gave God your all? Have you really, I just, maybe somebody come pray. Somebody come pray. Somebody, God's dealing with somebody. I don't care if you, I don't care if you're saying you're saved. I don't care. I ain't going to say that to you. We need to get this thing right. Yes. Well, we're living in a time, but J.R., where people, they're calling good, evil, and evil good. They think that what they're doing is okay, and they're going to end up in heaven the way that they're living. Oh, well, we think we're all right, but God, but J.R., just, he won't let me. But it's also, he just won't let me. I just can't do those things. But it's all we do those things. It just condemns you, preach you down. You've got to find a place of repentance. We've got to find ourselves an altar somewhere. I don't want to end up in hell. That rich man winded up in hell, lifted up his eyes, and he was in torment. Why won't we pray, Brother Sam? If you feel like praying, grab your neighbor by the hand and come to this altar. Grab your neighbor by the hand and come. I don't care what somebody says about you. Grab your neighbor. Everybody needs somebody ought to be praying right now. Somebody ought to be down somewhere talking to God about a budget because we're living in a time that this is not the truth. This is the word of God. We're going to end up in a place that we'll never get out of. We'll never get out of. Don't leave this way. Please don't leave this way. Don't play games with God. You'll end up in hell. Don't take others with you. <laughs> others down and take them with you. We ought to help one another and pray for one another. We should have no love towards one another. I should want to pray for you. I should feel obligated to pray for you and have love towards you because we're going to be in heaven together one day if we make it. But we've got to learn to love each other and care for one another and pray for one another. Please pray. Pray. Don't let nothing take you from Jesus. Don't allow nothing to take you from the love of God. Don't allow nothing to take you from the church and take you from the body of Christ and take you from the Holy Ghost. Please come to Jesus. Why is your heart so hard? Why is your heart so hard? Why is it got to be like that? Won't you receive Jesus? Won't you receive Jesus? Preacher, I just don't want to live like that. Honey, I didn't either. Nobody does. I just can't do it. It ain't easy. But it's worth it. There's a payday. There's a payday at the end of life's road. We're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're all going to be judged according to the deeds that were done in our body, whether they were bad or whether they were good. Please pray. You can't, you can't miss this judgment. You can't miss this appointment, honey. You'll never get out. You'll never get out.
Easter.